Hey everyone, this is uh, Drew from Moon Audio, and I thought today I'd do a little rough and quick uh, video on the Chord Hugo because we get so many questions about this product, and I thought I'd go over some of the different aspects of it um, based on questions we're getting on a regular basis. Um, what I've got here that I'm showing right now is an AK120. This is the last version, not the new uh, 2 version. Um, connected to the Accord Hugo with our new uh, Silver Dragon form fit cable. Um, we custom made a whole bunch of different form fit cables for different pieces of equipment. Um, this one particularly for the uh, 120. Um, I've also got one here that's for the new um, 120 and the 240. Um, what I can show you here is by disconnecting this from the Hugo. When you connect your um, 240, instead of putting um, the uh, unit on the top, you've actually got to put it on the bottom. The reason being is we designed these so that no matter which cable you'd use, you'd still have access to the volume control. So with the old 120, the unit sits back here and the cable uh, pushes forward to connect to it and still gives you access to the volume control. Because the 240 is so big, and the new uh, 120 and 102 are so long, we decided that we would engineer the cable so that it would connect to the bottom of the unit. And so you would place your unit right here, and this way you can still turn over and access the volume and access all the functionality on the, on the 240 and 120 and so forth. Um, and you'll notice it's got a really nice uh, connection on there, tight connection there, so you don't lose... Um, um, your signal integrity when uh, going portable with this unit. Uh, something else to notice about um, these Toslink cables is that we've got two versions on the website. We've got the Blue Dragon and now the Silver Dragon. Um, the old Blue Dragon was designed really for the days when we were doing nothing but 24, 96, Dolby Digital, DTS for home theaters, etc. Once you're going to these new high resolution format players like um, the AKs, um, Ibaso, uh, Fio, and, and, and many other portable players, they've now got the ability to do um, 24 192. So we had to develop a new uh, Toslink cable to handle these higher band rate resolution signals. So that's why we came up with the Silver Dragon, which uses the uh, 1300 core uh, Toslink fiber, whereas the Blue Dragon does not. The Blue Dragon is still a great cable. It's same flexibility and size and form factor. Um, but, but like I said, it won't do the higher resolutions. Um, some other things to note about the uh, Cord Hugo is that there have been two chassis revisions. Really, there haven't been many of the original ones, um, whereas a lot of the smalls were, a lot of the holes, sorry, were, were a lot smaller, like the Toslink, the coax, the analog. The coax is still a little bit tight. You know, there was only so much room for them to be able to open up the connector uh, because of the Toslink hole. Um, so this is what the final chassis version looks like. And really, if you've got the original chassis version, we've got plenty of cable connector options that'll fit. Uh, one thing to note about the Toslink connection, um, we sourced a bunch of RCAs to try and figure out which ones fit right. And here are a couple of our uh, Black Dragon uh, mini coax digital cables. And the tried and true connector that we used for a long time before the Hugo came along was the Cardus uh, GRCN, uh, which is a nice form factor, small fit, uh, getting into uh, um, uh, tight tight areas like the uh, well, like the Cord Hugo and, and other products like the Colorfly, which didn't have a lot of um, opening around the connector, and we had to get into tight fit fits. Um, what we found with the cord, though, and if you'll notice here, the center pin on this Kimber RCA is a lot deeper than, than the Cardis one. And what we found is that the Cardis one was a little bit loose fitting. It fits perfectly in the socket and so forth, but based on sometimes there are some tolerance issues between female and male connectors, that in some cases this was, was a little loose. So we looked around at other connectors and we finally felt that the Kimber which center, the center pin will go much farther into the female socket, produce the best connection and it's not loose at all and, and you can pull on it, it won't come out and it, it'll retain the connection uh, to the digital signal very well. Um, we haven't had a whole lot of trouble with the uh, analog 
um, outputs because the spacing has always been pretty large, but they've made it even larger now. So pretty much any connector that we use on our cables will fit into these connections. Um, quarter inch, never been an issue. Every quarter inch we have works well. Uh, for mini plugs, even our uh, uh, low profile connector that we use on our IM cables and the OEAs and so forth fit pretty well with the exception of the right angle OEA because it doesn't have a long enough neck but the straight OEAs work uh, perfectly in here or our uh, uh, low profile pre-molded right angle connector. Um, on the input side um, we've got two USB micro connections. We've got next to the power switch the HD resolution USB connection and next to it the standard definition uh, USB uh, micro connection. Um, the standard definition is primarily meant for connecting uh, things such as uh, your iPod, your iPhone, your iPad, um, and other devices that don't output a higher resolution format. Um, it must be noted, however, with at least the I Apple products, there is no Apple authenticity chip in the Hugo, so you will need to use a camera connection kit. Uh, this is one from Apple, which has the lightning connector that you'd connect to your iPhone or, or iPod or, or iTouch. The iPods don't have the lightning connector on it. And, and the iPads. And then on the other, other side is a, a USB female A, which we can uh, use with our USB cables. And this is our brand new Black Dragon USB cable, which you're getting a sneak peek at. We haven't put on the website yet might be on there by the time we get this video up or maybe the video up be up before we get this on there. But this is our new Black Dragon USB cable that's actually going to replace the Blue Dragon. And we've also revised the uh, Silver Dragon as well to be a new version. Uh, we've made some subtle improvements, uh, in improved shielding techniques and, and such. So, so this cable can be used for both uh, standard definition connection or the HD connection, but obviously for, for using the camera connection, you're going to plug it into the SD. Um, some other aspects about this is um, on, the, on the far left, we have the input switch. Um, this one's a little confusing, at least from the LED standpoint. Interior, when you turn on the unit, um, there's a color guide that comes with the Hugo and the instruction manual. But because they're trying to do so many different colors with the input, um, the colors don't perfectly match what they say. So sometimes it's a good idea to connect um, whatever you're going to use, let's so say the uh, USB connection, when you plug it up to a computer and just toggle through um, the input selection switch until you see this white disc light up. As soon as that white, lit, white, white disc lights up, that means you've established a lock and a connection to an item. Um, and, and, and a little, little going back to the Toslink cable, um, something you'll find that with the older um, AK units or earlier firmware, I should say, AK units, 240 included, that you need to make sure that you do a firmware update because sometimes you'll find um, that like on the AK240, which actually converts DSD to PCM and outputs it, if you haven't done your firmware um, upgrade, then connecting via Toslink to the 240, sometimes you'll find you won't get any uh, um, signal connection to the Hugo. Well, this means you need to do your firmware upgrade. Or what you'll find is that sometimes it'll work with 2496, but not 24192 and so forth. Well, this all goes back to firmware. So make sure you've got your latest firmware uh, loaded up on your AK. Um, typically, I use Windows to do the firmware update. It's a little more uh, uh, cumbersome on, on a Mac computer. Um, so anyway, so so this disc right here is going to light up every time it, it, it depicts the bit rate and resolution of the Hugo. Um, and you'll also notice inside the clear disc a few different LED colors that show up as you toggle through the inputs. Um, like I said, the input colors don't really match the diagram, so it's better to connect your two units and sort of scroll through the inputs. Uh, the other button here uh, to the uh, uh, um, inside of the uh, input selection is actually a crossfade button. This is for giving different modes that add spatial effects. Uh, if you've ever played around with crossfeed, it tries to create sort of a 3D realism inside uh, your head with headphones, trying to replicate sort of what uh, speakers do, trying to improve sound stage and depth of feel. Um, personally, I'm not a big fan of crossfeed. I like to just let the headphones do uh, 
uh, what they do naturally. You know, if a headphone doesn't have a good spatial definition to it, then obviously it's just not the best headphone. Um, then of course you've got your power switch and your uh, uh, a charging connection. It's a DC plug. Something to note about the power supply in the Hugo, it is a trickle charger. So the Hugo is always operating off of batteries. It's never operating off of the uh, uh, wall uh, power supply when you connect it. So when you connect it, it's slowly charging the battery and then, um, uh, and then charging the unit straight from the battery. Uh, that's the definition of a trickle charger. So thus you ne never have to deal with um, AC noise on the line, which, um, which you don't experience in DC uh, power supplies at all. You don't have to worry about it um, the way you do with an AC connection. Um, some other questions about the Hugo. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, like I said, this is the new chassis. There wasn't much different from the old chassis. Uh, I know Cord is working on a bag to carry this in. They've got a couple of different pictures that they just put up on Head 5 of, of potential sacks to put these in. These have, uh, because of their size, have been sort of difficult finding something to carry around from a portable aspect. I actually found that I use some of the hard drive uh, cases that are made by Case Logic, or you can go look at some of the low pro. Uh, camera bags those work too if you've got a bunch of equipment like a couple of AKs and, and, and you can even in some of those camera bags stuff in your headphones um, so I hope this has been a little helpful you know there's there's so much more about this Hugo to talk about but I wanted to talk a little you know more about the connection issues that people have had and, and what cables you might need um, um, to get you up and running with this Hugo um, the Hugo is is definitely an amazing product um, when I went to CES last year, I almost missed uh, getting to demo it and, and find this product. You know, it was about five o'clock on Saturday. I was about to head to um, uh, dinner at the end of the day. Uh, um, it was about five o'clock and I got a phone call from Jude Mansilla from HeadFi and he said, Drew, you got to go check out this Court Hugo. It's amazing. So I, so I ran over to the cord room. I said, where's the Hugo? Where's the Hugo? And so they quickly threw a pair of HD 800s on my head, uh, had a con uh, uh, an iPhone connected to it, and, and some high resolution music that they used via a couple of different apps, which we can t we'll talk about in a different video series. Um, and, and I was absolutely blown away. I, I immediately said, can I buy one? Can I buy one? And, and can I become a dealer? Because it was that good. I mean, my jaw was definitely on the ground at this point. Um, it really is a game changer. And there are DACs costing twice as much that this is just crushing. I don't want to mention any names. I don't want to, you know, down talk any other uh, products out in the field. But this thing is truly amazing for the price tag that it is. So anyway, we'll probably have another video on the Hugo talking about more of the technical aspects, but we thought we just wanted to go over some of the connection um, issues that people were having and questions that they were having. I hope this has been a little bit informative for you. And uh, as always, enjoy and happy listening.